Hello and welcome to Meeting Jesus. I'm Wayne Clark, the pastor at Trinity Baptist Church in Gorton. This is a new series of Facebook Live Bible studies and a time of prayer uh, in this week's leading up to Easter that we call Lent. Yes, I know it's not Lent yet. Today is uh, Pancake Day. It's Shrove Tuesday. It's the day before Lent, but we're starting this series, which is going to be here on Facebook Live at two o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday in these weeks leading up to Easter. Uh, we don't really do Lent in our church, but we're still going to use these weeks as a time for preparation, for prayer, for Bible study, and for, as the title says, meeting Jesus. We're going to spend more time in the Bible. We're going to spend more time getting closer to Jesus. Uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, this is a time for you to, uh, to understand more about Jesus and to get to know him better. If you're not a follower of Jesus, then you're still welcome to join the journey. And I'd love to hear your comments and your questions as well. As we come to follow Jesus, we we'll also be meeting Jesus as he meets people on the road to Jerusalem. We're going to be looking through different passages in Luke's Gospel. And through those passages, we'll be seeing different people who Jesus encounters on the road, on the way towards the cross. And as we get closer towards Easter, we'll be getting closer towards the, um, the final uh, calling that Jesus has from his father to give up his life on the cross, culminating in his death. And, uh, and then his glorious resurrection. Uh, we're going to be uh, using this time to read the Bible together, to think a bit about the Bible, to pray and I hope also it will be an opportunity to share together. I want you to share here on Facebook your thoughts, uh, your comments. And uh, if you've got anything to pray for, we can pray for those things as well. And uh, I'll be looking at the Facebook comments and trying to respond to what you want to say. Uh, because we're thinking about how God speaks to us all through the Bible and through our shared experiences. So please do share in some of those as well. And these videos will also be posted afterwards on YouTube. So you'll be able to find them uh, and watch them again or tell us about them on our church YouTube channel. I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, let's pray as we begin. Father God, please be with us as we open the Bible together as we share in this time together. Uh, we thank you that we can join with friends from all over, well, all over the world possibly, as we are on Facebook together now, and we pray, Lord, that you will join our hearts together as one and help us to understand what we're hearing and what we're reading and that you will speak to us through your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a, a reading to dig together, but... Uh, before the reading today, I just want to set the scene. All the events in this series are from the second half of the Gospel of Luke. And they're all part of Jesus' journey towards the cross, where he knows that his Father's will for him is that he is to die. Oh, all these encounters that we're going to be looking at over these weeks to Easter are in the shadow of, of the cross. The cross is central to our faith. And it's also central to the story that Luke is telling us. He knows as he tells the story that what is in view at the end of the story is that Jesus is on his way to give his life as a sacrifice for sin. So in chapter 9 of Luke's Gospel, which is sort of the halfway point, the central point of his story, he sends out the twelve to proclaim the kingdom because he knows he won't be on earth forever to do this work. He knows that before too long he will have to pass on this work to others. And at the end of when they come back from doing that mission he asks them who they think he is and Peter says well you are the Christ the Messiah and from then on he starts to make clear to him what's going to happen. He says he's going to suffer and die and on the third day he will be raised to life. And from then on uh, he says, well, that's what this is about, guys. He says, that's what our mission is now all about, going to Jerusalem where I will be handed over and crucified. I will rise again, but from now on, this is what the mission is about. 
So in these Bible studies together, we're going to be starting here in chapter 10 in Luke's Gospel on Jesus is already got the end in sight. And I think as Luke tells the story, he wants us to have the end in sight as well. Uh, the whole of the rest of Luke's Gospel from chapter 9 onwards, but particularly as we get to chapter 10 today, is with the cross in sight. So today we come to our reading. It's a passage that we're going to be looking at in our study today. I'm just going to spend a few minutes on this and a few minutes thinking about what it means and how God is speaking to us through his word. This is our reading for today. It's Luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42. You may want to look this up in your own Bible, uh, whether that's in printed form or on a phone or whatever, or you may just want to read it off the screen with me. Luke 10, 38, 42, here it is. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, important phrase that, on their way, they're on their way to, on their way to Jerusalem. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. That's Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Just a few words of considering the meaning of this passage and how it may be speaking to us today. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. On his way is a significant phrase in this passage. On his way to Jerusalem with all that he'll face there on his mind and he's offered hospitality by these sisters Martha and Mary uh, it's not stated here in Luke's gospel but we know from John's gospel that these sisters live in a village called Bethany a village outside Jerusalem uh, and their brother uh, is Lazarus who was had been dead and Jesus raised him to life we read that in John chapter 10 that's an earlier incident uh, and so Jesus is going somewhere he knows he'll receive hospitality and a welcome. And he tell, and Luke tells us that while Jesus is there, Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what Jesus says, while Martha is getting on with the preparations, presumably making the tea. And Luke says two things about Martha. First, he says she was distracted by all she was doing says verse 40, Martha was distracted by all the preparations she had to make. And secondly, he, he, we're told about Martha that uh, she wanted Mary to help her. Don't you care that my sister's left me to do all the work by myself, she says. She wanted Jesus to tell Mary to come and help because Martha had ended up doing all the work herself. Let's also consider what Luke tells us Mary was doing, because this is important. It says, Mary sat at the Lord's feet, it's in verse 39, Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. That's a significant phrase that we mustn't just take for granted. Um, in the culture of the time, sitting at the feet of a master was the normal description for the disciple of a rabbi. A Jewish rabbi, a Jewish teacher, would sit uh, on a, a stone or a chair or a, a platform to teach, and his disciples would sit at his feet. But the Jewish uh, culture was that a rabbi was a man, and the disciples were always men, never women. The Jewish law didn't allow women to receive instruction in the faith. For Mary to be described as sitting at the Lord's feet is describing her in the role of a disciple, a learner of a rabbi. 
something normally reserved for men. Men who would learn and in time would become rabbis, would become teachers themselves. It was the training to become a teacher, sitting at a, 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 a rabbi's feet as a disciple. So it's likely that Martha's not only annoyed that she's doing all the work, she's scandalised that Martha is acting like a male disciple from his teacher. But Jesus doesn't say, uh, Martha, you're right, <laughs> you're breaking, Mary's breaking all the rules here. Jesus says, Mary has chosen well. Jesus' time is short. And he needs those who will carry on his work, both men and women, those who will learn and will grow in faith. And, for now, sit at his feet. Martha's hard work is not wrong. Doing practical things like that is admirable. But Mary's devotion to Jesus and simply to learning from him so that one day she and others can carry on his work is what matters more at this time. Mary met Jesus as a learner, as a disciple, so that she could carry on his work. What do we learn here as we start our series on meeting Jesus? Well, we learn, I think, that we are called simply to spend time with Jesus, sometimes, a lot of the time, and learn from him. Time sitting at the feet of Jesus as his disciples is not time wasted. Listening to Jesus comes before taking action for Jesus. Being a follower of Jesus is more important than doing Jesus' actions. Luke says Martha was distracted. Other things can so easily distract us from listening to Jesus and his purpose for our lives. Just being with Jesus, listening, putting our trust in him is an authentic way of meeting Jesus. It is, as Jesus says, a good thing. So the challenge for us today is how can God speak to you today? How is he speaking to you through this passage? And how can you hear the voice of Jesus? Put your comments down here on Facebook and we will hear what one another is saying uh, today. How is God telling you to listen and engage with meeting Jesus today? Tomorrow is the start of Lent. Maybe that doesn't mean much to you. It does for a lot of Christians. Even if that's not part of your tradition, perhaps you could use these next few weeks, especially while many of us are in lockdown, to meet Jesus in a new way. Perhaps we can turn this frustrating position we're in to our advantage. Spending time with Jesus in a way that we haven't usually got time to do. Add your comments if you've got things to say here. We'll just check on Facebook and see if there's uh, people adding adding comments. Um, let me see if there's comments being added here. Um, see if I can get to where the comments will be put. Thank you if you're joining us today and you're uh, able to put some comments. Hi to Jeff and Doreen who are watching us today. Um, thanks to Clement who says that God speaks to us through dreams. Yes he does. I believe that Clement you're right. God does speak to us through dreams. Thank you for that. God speaks to us in a variety of ways, doesn't he? I don't want to detain us too long in these sessions. I've said there'll be about 15 minutes and we're getting towards that already. So just a, a minute for our prayers. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that you'll help us to hear you when you speak to us. That we will hear the Lord Jesus when he speaks as we spend time with him. Help us to be like Martha, being willing to serve, but help us also to be like Mary, to sit at your feet as disciples and learners of you. Lord, on this day, the 
16th of February, we pray for our nation, Great Britain. We pray for a nation where many people are getting COVID vaccinations. We pray those vaccinations may continue. But we're also in a world where more than 109 million people worldwide have been confirmed of having COVID. And so we pray for a world in need. We pray for a world where more than 2 million people have died with COVID and all those who are grieving and left behind are hurting because of this terrible global pandemic. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, may your love and your grace be known in this, our nation, and in the nations of the world. Lord, may your blessing be upon us. Give us strength this day to serve you. Give us grace this day, sometimes just to stop and listen and to hear your voice. So may your blessing and your peace be with us now and always. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I'll be back here on Thursday uh, at two o'clock. And uh, on Thursday, we're going to be going into chapter 13 of Luke's Gospel and seeing how Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath day. Uh, that's, on, that's going to be here on Facebook Live on Thursday at two o'clock. If you want to see this and any of our other videos again, you can see them on YouTube. Go to youtube.com and search for Trinity Baptist Gorton, Trinity Baptist Gorton to see our videos. From me, Wayne Clark, thanks for being with us and uh, goodbye for now. Goodbye.